If you're looking for the best studio headphones, here's a list you must see. We made this list based on our personal preference and sorted it based on their features, prices, quality, durability, and reputation of the manufacturers and customer feedback. Also, we've included options for every type of customer. So let's get started. At the first position of our list, we have Sony MDR7506. The Sony MDR7506 is the least expensive of the bunch and also the least wow inducing. However, don't take that to mean they aren't light years beyond consumer cans, because they definitely are. I recommend these to anyone absolutely strapped for cash looking to enter the pro market for headphones. They also make nice ones to get banged up by a bandit. You need a dozen or so. Otherwise, if you can save up just a little bit more, it's worth looking at the next two options, including my all-time favorite. The MDR7000 106s are sturdy and comfy. They have most of the features you'll find in the more costly models, such as coiled cords just under 10 feet and an adapters to switch from 1 slash 8th inch to 1 slash 4th inch for popping them into your smartphone on the go to enjoy some tunes. They can blast 106 dB through the 40 mm drivers. That's more than enough for circumoral closed backs. At only 8.1 ounces, you can wear them all day, too. Other electronics companies have also tried to jump into the headphone market with absurdly cheap prices for visually attractive headphones that sound like crap. Don't waste your time. This is the bottom rung of the pro ladder. It's a good rung. Moving on to the next at number two with Sennheiser hey, SER HD 280 PRO. Whenever I'm asked about good headphones, the Sennheiser HD 280 Pro is always the first one out of my mouth. This is where I landed after trying tons of other brands of varying prices. The cost is more than competitive for the quality. Not just audio quality, but build strength as well. The ear cups not only swivel 90 degrees, but fold up into the bend as well, which keeps them safe and compact when traveling. I'm on my third pair, not because they ever broke, but because my old cat, bless her heart, puked right into the ear cup and ruined one. From 8HC all the way up to 25KHC. You'll hear it all with minimal distraction thanks to the isolation and outside attenuation. Quality is such a subjective thing. But I can tell you that these bad boys stand up to, to even the amplifier-powered ones at three and four times the price. Unlike many others, you have some serious clarity and imaging in the base region. Once I tried these, I never bothered to try any other brand again. It's top quality at a relatively low price. Give them a try. The number three position is held by Audio-Technica ATHM40X. As an alternative to the HD280 Pros above, I also quite enjoyed the Audio-Technica ATHM40X as well. I happen to enjoy the headband padding more on the others, but besides that they are almost the same thing. They feature the same tank philosophy and the ability to swivel and fold up. Amazon even has a hard shell case they can fold up into on the cheap too, although they do come with a cloth pouch case. Since I'm comparing these with the Sennheisers, what I did like about these were they were lighter at around 9 ounces and the cable could be detached. The detachable cable is cool because it keeps the jack from getting tore up in the pouch. Others will hide and protect that joint by building it into the earpiece. It's not better or worse, just cool and different. This means the cable is replaceable if lost, and you can also score replacement ear cups if they get raggedy after years of use. These get the job done in terms of quality too, and make a perfect additional reference point in addition to your monitors. If you don't have monitors and acoustic treatment, you can certainly do all you need on these or the others on this list. But get some monitors eventually too. I like these and had no qualms about them. They are a perfect alternative to my favorites. You may like them better. Next at number 4 we have DIR X Sound EX29. Extreme Isolation is the name of the game with the Direct Sound EX29s. If you read reviews of any popular item, you'll see some knuckleheads who thought they could put these on and play the drums, and they should block out the drums, like earplugs. That's not the point. The EX29 boasts 29 dB of isolation, probably better than that, honestly, and that's mainly to keep your backing track from bleeding into the microphones. These definitely do that very well. They also come in black or white color options, which is cool. Everyone else typically only offers black. Why is that? My experience can be summed up like this. They're heavy and tight, which is neither a pro or a con. They don't fall off. Their frequency response doesn't reach beyond 20K HC, which is fine for adults, but young people may notice a lack of sparkle. 
other than that they were pretty comparable quality-wise. Just treat them kindly because the plastic is kind of thin on the headband and on the earpiece connectors. It's not a problem if they stay at your desk or in the studio. The number 5 position is held by Bayer Dynamic D770 PRO. All in all, the build on the Bayer Dynamic D770 Pros are a bit nicer, especially with the padding and the cloth around the padding. The trade-off is the plastic holding the earpieces on. You'll want to take extra care not to stress them in any weird way when traveling as they aren't as rugged as the others above. If they'll stay in the studio or the desk then there's no worries. There's a two-year warranty anyways. What I liked about these, besides the extra comfortable Valerier pads, was the incredible bass response. It wasn't exaggerated like consumer sets. It was more accurate, even without an amplifier. I never tried them like that, but I suspect it only gets better. The only reason I never bought some of these for myself was the price. It's not that much higher than the others, but I was broke as a joke at the time. I feel it's worth the ticket price, especially if you'll be mixing and not just recording. These babies are light and as comfy as it gets. The frequency response goes well above and below human capabilities, so consider sagging a second pair for your dog. Every part is replaceable, and there's even a travel bag. This is one of those lifetime purchases that's totally worth it if you can spring for it at the time. The number six position is dominated by Focal Spirit PRO Fies Siana L. Let me put this to you as straight as possible. The Focal Spirit Professional headphones aren't cheap, and in this case you do get what you pay for, with one or two gripes depending on the person. Let's gripe first. The ear holes in the padding around which isn't typically a problem, but the cuffs are a bit smaller than most. If you're like me and have big ears, then they may not fit into the cuffs without some help from your fingers. Coupled all with them being fairly tight, and I found my upper ear cartilage a bit unhappy after four and five hour long sessions. Your mileage may vary. They are light though, so that helps some. The real reason we're here is to talk about the quality though. These puppies shine like no other. I worked with a pianist slash vocalist who would bring these into the studio with his keyboard. I got to use them for about a month since he'd leave them. When you listen with these, you are hearing exactly what's on the record. It's the flattest, least exaggerated earphones I've had the pleasure to use. I never realized the song on my favorite album had real subtle chimes in the background until I laid in bed with these. Again, this was with the 3.5mm jack into my iPhone. I imagine if you pushed them with an amp, it'd be even more spectacular, especially in the low end bass region, but they are great even without. I wish I could explain it better with words, but you just have to hear it. They justify the price for sure. Moving on to the next at number seven with Shure SRH 1540. This is the big leagues. The Shure SRH 1540s may appear on the surface like any other on the list, but it's just not the case. That's not typical plastic you're looking at, but airplane grade aluminum alloy. Solid. They aren't heavy either. I appreciated the cord being six feet instead of nine two as a mixer at the desk. All that length can get annoying at times. Admittedly, I only used these here and there for a few days and didn't push them through an amplifier. You're going to want to do that with these to get the maximum quality out of them. Even so, I could tell these were cut above. All pro headphones managed to get the mids and highs, right? The challenge is producing a worthy bass signal out of small woofers. An amp helps, but I could tell these shined in that area even without. That's about all I can say. If you want top of the line, this is it. Click the pick and read the reviews from the pros there. It's unanimous besides the one person who claimed they sounded like $20 headphones. Okay, Ro. Everything sounds like that when you listen to a 128 kbps MP3 on your Zoom. If you score some of these, send me a pair. I may spring for these when my HD 280 Pros die. The number 8 position is held by Samson SR850. The Samson SR850s represent the super affordable spectrum of the open back realm, which makes me surprised at how nice and comfortable they are. Not that they shouldn't be, but a lot of companies will skimp out on their lower end offerings. This is a testament to the care Samson puts in all of their products. I had a pair of these a long time ago and remember being amazed by them as my first step up from in ear sports earphones. They are pretty good relatively, especially for the price, but don't expect a miracle. These can make a great introduction into the world of better cans. These are the kind you use till they croak then you toss them. You won't find replacement parts available. What you'll discover is that these don't reach down into the deep bass, but the open back allows for some nice punch in the upper bass with the kick drums. Otherwise, they do pretty well in the mids and highs. 
It's the cheap option, and you can get by with them, but if you're trying to do very serious work, look at the next choice below. Next at number 9, we have AKG K701. I'd call the AKG K701 headphones mid-range in terms of pricing. I don't mention any higher priced open backs here for two reasons. I haven't tried them, and that's because if you spend more than this you should be getting a closed back set of cans, though they are multi-purpose. I think these are some seriously handsome headphones. The band is leather and keeps the actual support structure off of your head, as you can see. The ear cups are fairly large too, which provides solid comfort for long sessions, particularly for us big ear folk. These boast some unique technology in the diaphragms and cores in the driver that supposedly offer better quality. I was skeptical of these kind of clams until I tried Adam's ribbon tweeters on my monitors. It can be true, which seems to be the case with these. With these you're going to want to use a headphone amplifier of some sort even if it's a desktop DAC. You need the juice to get enough volume out of them if you like to listen loud. They don't even come with the 1-8 inch adapter. That's the hint. My opinion is that these can work more than well for a set of dedicated mixing headphones, but remember that the open back will leak sound some. It's not that bad, but it can have backing tracks leaking into your mic recordings or can tick off the guy in the next cubicle if you take them to work. Finally, the number 10 position is dominated by Audio-Technica ATHM 50X. The ATHM 50X are designed very well and are one of the more attractive studio headphones around. They're mostly plastic but feel very sturdy and well-built. The brushed aluminum touches are nice and offer some visual contrast to the matte black. The ear pads are leather or leather-like and feel soft and cushioned. The ear cups fold up for portability, and they also swivel in both directions. The headband is also leather and looks nicely stitched together. The ATHM 50X are one of the most popular and lauded studio headphones out there. But sadly, comfort is where they miss the mark. The ear pads are soft so it's more of an issue with the distribution of pressure and the headband. More so than any other pair, we found ourselves having to take breaks every hour or so. They're not the lightest set of cans around, 0.63 pounds, which might contribute to the discomfort. When it comes to price per performance ratio, the Audio-Technica ATHM 50X are nearly unbeatable. The Bayer Dynamic D770 PRO come very close. For studio use, whether you're producing hip hop or electronic music, tracking vocals, recording guitar, etc. These deliver outstanding results. Audio-wise, the ATHM 50X are outstanding headphones for movies, music, and gaming. They're attractive and sleek, so have no fear rocking these in public. The three included cords are handy, and you can switch them out depending on your use case. The downside is their low comfort level, so unless aesthetics are very important for you, we recommend the Bear Dynamic D770 PRO for casual listening over the Audio-Technica without going to the $250 price point and beyond. The ATHM 50X are definitely some of the very best studio headphones for the money, so much so that they almost risk being overhyped by producers and audiophiles. The fact is that they are popular for good reason there are a great choice for people who want closed back. Over-ear headphones that can be used for just about any type of studio work. That's all for today. We upload music product review videos every single day, so, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for the upcoming video notification.